week we got to see an incredible tag team championship match between EYFPO and Red Dragon. Both teams put on an impressive display, but in the end, it was EYFBO who scored the win, retaining their titles. However, last night, I had a chance to sit down with the champs for an exclusive interview. We had a shocking announcement to make about the future of the House of Glory World Tag Team Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is JD, and tonight, I am here with not only the Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Champions, but more importantly, the House of Glory Tag Team Champions, Santana Ortiz, EYFBO. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing all right. You forgot one title, though. Global, Global Force. Force. I saw it. Global as well. Force. Yeah, man. There you, you gotta, go. You're going to boost our ego. Do it right. Yeah, Look exactly. at all this gold. It's <laughs> a lot of gold. I'm jealous. All right, gentlemen, I got a few questions for you this evening. Number one. For all the new listeners and viewers out there, EYFBO, what does it stand for and where did the name originate? Um, are we allowed to swear on the, on the show? Is it okay? Entertaining your <laughs> off, that's <laughs> what it means. And uh, yeah, we came up with it on a random random car ride up to a show like years ago when we were first starting out. Yeah. And one of our boys gave us the whole idea because we were trying to go for the whole LMFAO gimmick. Shout out Chris Cage. That everybody was doing at the time, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. Not everybody was doing it. No, 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 no. Everybody wasn't doing it. That's why I said we should do it, because nobody was doing it. Don't say everybody was doing it. This guy. But anyways, uh, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. And we entertain people. Yes, you do. Absolutely. Uh, what made you guys decide to become a tag team and make your mark as a duo in the world of professional wrestling? I, we didn't decide. I was kind of forced to, by him, to become a tag team. It was. Uh, uh, at the great? time, it was a true story. You, you want to go off the cuff? Um, I, I, we were both uh, started wrestling separately. Each we we had our own separate journeys. We went to wrestling school separately. We knew each other when we were kids. And not to go off too much on a tangent, but uh, eventually we started working with each other. And then he was like, "Oh, I have an opportunity to do a tag team match." And at the time, I, I was maybe three years into wrestling. I was kind of hurt at the time. I was like, "Yeah, I don't know." All four hundred pounds. Of yeah, I was like four hundred pounds. I was a big guy. And um, thankfully, you know, he forced me to do the match. And hey, look where we're at now. There you go. All right, alongside Conan, Homicide, and Diamante, you guys are part of LAX on Impact Wrestling. Yes, sir. What was the transition like from EYFBO to LAX, and how's it working and learning under Conan? Well, I mean, LAX is just pretty much us growing up in New York City, you know what I mean? That's what we're portraying uh, when we do Impact. Um, it hits home with him because, uh, you know, he had a, a rough upbringing. Um, but uh, he knows what the streets are like, and uh, as do I, you know what I mean? And it just uh, it hits close to home because it's just, it's, it's who we are just turned up to like 100. I mean, I like to be a little, you know, more comedic, as people know, you know, I like to get a swivel in now and then. But uh, when it's LAX, it's all business. It's all about taking the gold, uh, obviously. And it's, um, it's just making a statement because everybody has a hard time in wrestling. Every race, every, every creed, every ethnicity, everybody goes through this hard, their hard time. But as a Latino and as a proud Latino, it's, it, it's awesome that when we used to watch TNA back in the day and watch LAX, we were like, hell yeah, that's what we're talking about. Because there aren't too many positive Latino role models. And, you know, even though they lean more towards the, the bad side of things, they're still doing something positive in the sense that they're on TV and they're, and they're being recognized as a great tag team. LAX back in the day were insane. And to be able to follow in their footsteps is, is bananas. Not only that, but like pretty much going off of what he said, uh, you know, at the end of the day, is Latinos following a dream? Is a Latinos sticking up for themselves and, and uh, you know, being being empowered? You know what I mean? That's, that's what the whole LAX thing was about. Yeah. To begin with, uh, Latino empowerment. So, uh, like you said, to be following in those footsteps and like you were asking, learning from Conan, holy shit. Yeah. I mean, uh, OG for what real. Else, yeah. What else can you say? This man has seen it all, done it all. And uh, learning, there's not too many people in this business that get it and uh, that understand what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And that guy is truly one of those people. Man. He, he gets uh, it. Oh, yeah. 100%. He, he knows where to place things, he knows what's going to get a reaction, he knows what's going to be shitty. And uh, 
he has no hair on his tongue and he's easy and quick to let you know if he doesn't like something. 100%. Which which we appreciate because we're we're the same. So yeah. yeah. But yeah, man, it's been great being under that learning tree. Not just Conan, but Homicide as well, you know. Uh, us coming out of the New York scene, Homicide, Low Key, Amazing Red, uh, Brian Excel, the SATs. Um, I could go on for days, but um, following in those footsteps, man. Yeah. We, uh, we uh, try to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Model our indie career after the forefathers of New York City, like the people he just mm-hmm. named, including like the Hit Squad and all those other guys, like that just New York doghouse crew. Yeah. We, we always wanted that. Like Bazuzu, Dickinson, Jaka, Pinky, and us. Like, we always were enamored with that New York, that New York crew, even though. That's what we set out to do. Yeah. That's what we wanted to be, you know what I mean? Growing up, like, yeah, of course we aspired to be Stone Cold in the Rock, but like, for us, when we were going to those early 2000, like, uh, Jersey All Pro shows, Ring of Honor shows, CZW shows, like, that was me. I was on those buses. I was a smart marks yelling at CM Punk and throwing shit at him. And like, that was me, but like, that's who I wanted to be, like, that style, that mm-hmm. strong style, the crazy lucha, like, come on, man, like, yeah. <laughs> You guys have defeated some of the best tag teams in this business, from the Broken Hardys to Red Dragon. Do you have a dream match you guys would love to have and test your skills mm-hmm. against, proving why you are one of the best tag teams in the world? The Briscoes. Because there's only one team, man, and that's the them boys, yeah, the Briscoe the Brothers. Briscoes. I legitimately believe the Briscoes are the best tag team in the world, in my, in my opinion. Yeah. Listen, I'm not trying to knock anybody else, like the Young Bucks or anyone else, but like the Briscoes, I've been able to... Stay consistent and wrestle that style. And I'm, I'm getting up there in age. And, then I, you know, I'm starting to feel it. And I'm like, damn. But they still wrestle the style. And they're still able to keep going. And they haven't broken down yet. And the, it, it's insane to think. And they're still wrestling that style. And, like, the, their tours in Japan. And, like, they're just th- number one. Like, uh, they work together because they work each other. With, they work like brothers because they are brothers. And that's why we try to model ourselves after. We might not be related by blood. But, hey, no one can tell me he's not my brother. Yeah, awesome. Last question here, guys, uh, and uh, I think this is going to kind of segue into something that is going to be very important for our event coming on July 1st. Besides EY, FBO, and House of Glory, if there's one team on this roster that you would say is the biggest threat to these House of Glory Tag Team Championships, who would it be and why? Oh, um, of course, Private Party. you got to thank Private Party, their former champions. Um... They're constantly getting bigger opportunities. They're wrestling all over, and uh, they've always been a mainstay at House of Glory um, ever since, like, day one. Uh, I think we, we did our first title defense against them as their first, like, kind of team-up or right around the time when they first got started. And then even them being in the ring with them, and, like, they could just go. So, like, of course, my money would be on a private party. But um, also the super savages, man. Yeah, I think I think those guys are are young and hungry and ready to be on another level. Yeah, caveman um, got a really hard head, man. <laughs> like but, legit. Uh, yeah, man, those those kids are hungry and and they want it and they're willing to do whatever they have to do to get better and to to get to this to this point and uh, you know get to these straps right here. Yeah, and on that note, unfortunately, we have a. A bit of news. Uh, due to obligations um, and impact, and uh, we unfortunately can't make the next House of Glory event. So we're going to have to relinqu- relinquish the titles and uh, put them up for grabs. And hopefully, a team like the team that we named step it up and take it to the next level because we will be back. But um, this hurts close to home because the House of Glory titles legit was our first tag team titles that we won as a tag team. Like, honestly, if it wasn't for getting opportunities in places like House of Glory, like a Beyond Wrestling, like the places that we wrestled, like, we wouldn't have these other two titles right here. Not only that, before we uh, relinquish anything, I want to set something straight, straight up. I'm going to shoot from the hip. These titles are much more than just being a great tag team. They're much more than representing House of Glory. Hey, they're much more of even representing yourself. They represent New York City. New York City independent wrestling, since the start, has been a problem. And it's not been a game. 
So whoever is going to come up, step up to the plate, and uh, do what they have to do to get to this level, I want you to know something. Guys like us, guys like Amazing Red, guys like Brian Excel, guys like Homicide, Low Key, Hit Squad, all those names, they worked hard. They bust their ass all around the world to get to where they've gotten to and to build not only themselves, but a reputation from where they come from, New York City. Whoever takes these titles, no, <laughs> you're following a tradition. It's not a game. Us, we don't look at this shit as a game. This is for real. So to whoever's next in line to come and whoever's going to take that next spot, no, we're coming back. <laughs> and we ain't coming back to play no games. We'll be watching. And if you don't step it up, if you don't say, if excuse me, if you don't do what he said, oh, you're going to have to deal with us. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking news here. House of Glory Tag Team Championships vacated. EYFBO relinquishing the titles. July 1st, never trust the snake. New champions will be crowned. We here at House of Glory wish both men the best in Impact Wrestling. Show me what you got, baby! Make sure to come this Saturday, July 1st, to the Queensboro Elks Lodge in New York as House of Glory presents Never Trust a Snake, featuring a rare appearance by WWE Hall of Famer Jake the Snake Roberts. Get tickets now at HOGWrestling.net.